Hey, Kyle with Pure, and we're back again for the final demo video in this technical series. And in this one, uh, we are going to show a few of the different PowerShell commands and how you can run them against your AVS cluster usage um, and what they do. The first thing we'll do is we'll initialize the AVS cluster. We'll then create a VMFS volume on Cloud Block Store. And then we'll show a sample restore operation, which is the mechanism by which you can actually migrate uh, on-premises VMs and workloads to AVS. So we'll use the Pure Storage OVA, which again was covered how to install in the previous demo video. And we've already got our PowerShell script up and running. But before we start, here's the full list of available PowerShell commands. Um, we'll only cover a few in this demo video. We'll have subsequent demo videos though to show the remainder of these. Now, one optional step to make things easier is we're going to go ahead and cache our Cloud Block Store credential as a variable so we don't have to continually re-enter it throughout the remainder of this demo video. So that's shown there and on our support site how to do that. Now we're going to instantiate the build PCBS cluster. And this is what actually initializes your AVS cluster so that it can be used with Cloud Block Store. So we'll start with the build PCBS command. And then we need a few other pieces of info that I'll paste in here. We need the cluster name. Um, if you can have cluster one, cluster two, however many clusters you have running, the AVS cloud name, and then the AVS resource group. Uh, optionally, if you have not entered in your vCenter or Cloud Block Store credentials, you will also be prompted for those. If we hop over to the AVS instance itself and go over to run command, we can actually see these different run command operations running live against this cluster. So what we're doing here is we're actually initializing iSCSI on our different AVS hosts and adding our CBS instance that we have credentialed against uh, as a target. So we actually go into this first AVS node, and we go down over to storage adapters, Again, this is all done as the cloud admin user, so you can check this yourself as well. You can see that our iSCSI software adapter has been initiated. Uh, we have an IQ1 associated with this AVS host. And then we have an iSCSI target on our CBS array, which we'll hop over to now. Uh, now this will iterate through all of these different hosts. We can see two of them are already done. But we can see there's our host IQ1 for iSCSI. Um, and here we could say it's almost done. We're on our third and final host in this cluster. And then it's going to go ahead and add those AVS hosts to a host group on Cloud Block Store. So this operation is now complete. Um, we've got everything initialized and stood up. Uh, so the next step we're going to do is go ahead and create a net new VMFS volume against our AVS cluster. Um, again, you pass in a lot of the same information, uh, although this one's a little different in that we actually give a data store name. We provide a size. Um, and then we also give the, as before, AVS cloud name and resource group. Again, optionally, you can pass in your vCenter credentials and Cloud Block Store credentials if you have multiple AVS or CBS instances in play. Um, we're yet again invoking this run command. You can see we're rescanning our VMFS volume. It'll take a few minutes for this to get initialized because we are running a run command, um, which I think we're going to check on here in a minute. Um, but here we can see, oh, there's our data store. So our data store has been created. Um, here's our run command execution, which is also completed as well. And then if we actually go into CBS itself, uh, into this host group, we can see that our connected volume is, is now there as well. And it's at our one terabyte size. And now if we check data stores, we can see there's our VMFS volume and it behaves identically to any on-premises VMFS volume from this point forward from within the context of vCenter. Cool, so now let's start to do something a little bit more interesting, at least in my opinion. Um, in this example, I'm gonna bring up an on-premises vCenter instance, and I've got a SQL VM, just SQL 2019 VM, and, it's, and it resides on an AVS migrate volume. I've added that volume to a protection group, and that protection group, or I should say this array where that SQL VM is on premises, has a connection into my cloud block store array that we used earlier in this example. So we can see that protection group, the member is the AVS migrate VMFS data store. I've got a snapshot schedule and a replication schedule using my CBS array as a target. Now, if we look at my CBS array, we can see here is that volume snapshot from my on-premises array on the top there. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that volume snapshot name, and then we're gonna use the restore PowerShell commandlet to copy that on-premises replicated snapshot to a new volume and attach it up to AVS 
uh, running on top of CBS. So you can see there's our volume snapshot name. There's our the same cluster we used earlier. And then of course we've got AVS cloud name and our AVS resource group. Optionally, you can also rename this data store to something uh, other than the default randomized uh, name that it's given. But for this exercise, we, we're not gonna do that. So here we can see we've invoked it and now we have our new VMFS data store created and attached to our AVS cluster. Just looking at CBS now, we can see that on cluster two, uh, there's our AVS migrate VMFS volume we've restored from an on-premises array snapshot. And now if we actually go in, we can see there's that volume there. Um, and if we actually navigate inside of it, we can see there's our SQL VM that we wanted to migrate to AVS. We click on the SQL VM. All this can be scripted by the way, but just to show it, uh, now we're gonna register this VM inside of AVS. We're going to select our cluster and put it into a resource group inside of that cluster. And then when we actually go over to the VM, again, all this stuff can be scripted, but for this example, we're gonna go ahead and uh, change our network to our NSXT network segment that we're using here. Disconnect a data store ISO file because we don't need it. And then we'll boot up this SQL VM from our on-premises flash array and on-premises vCenter. And that's literally how easy it is to migrate a VMFS-based VM to AVS. There's other available commandlets like increasing a VMFS volume size and destroying one. Um, I encourage you to check out our documentation, but thanks so much for watching this demo video series. Uh, this is the conclusion and I appreciate you hanging out uh, till the end. Thanks again and good luck.